I'm Patty Moreno, the garden girl. And I'm Mel Bartholomew, the square foot gardening guy. We are going to talk about the most frequently asked questions. Right. So let's just get started okay. right away. All and right. our first question here is, what wood should people use to build their boxes? Okay. Good question. And the best answer is free wood. Now, free is a good, good answer, right? Yeah. Because it doesn't cost you anything. And we're practicing the three R's. We're recycling, we're reusing, and with square foot gardening, we're reducing. Now, where do you get free wood? Well, first of all, we're going to be building boxes uh, that are going to measure approximately four feet by four feet, and they're going to be six inches deep. Where are we going to get this? Well, you go to any construction site, you look around your neighborhood or wherever you're driving, and if you see a construction site, you will also see big dumpsters sitting there. there. And what are they doing with those dumpsters? Filling them with scrap wood and carting it away and putting it in the landfills. So you go to the foreman, find the, the boss man, and say, I'm building a square foot garden at my house and I need some scrap wood. Do you have any lumber like that? And he said, well, what length do you need? Well, it's four feet. He said, oh, we got tons of four footers. What size wood? Well, I need either six inches deep, either one by six or two by sixes. And on most construction sites, the, that would be the framing lumber would be two by six. And he'll say, I've got some two by sixes. I'll cut them for you four feet long. <laughs> You've got it all done. What kind of wood specifically should we be using? Well, if you're going to go buy your lumber, then you go to a lumber store, you have quite a few choices. Number one, you have pine or fir, which is the cheapest. And again, you can buy one by six or two by six lumber. Then you have cedar, and that usually comes in one by six or again, two by six. It's starting to get more expensive. And redwood is the ultimate. That will last the longest and it's the most expensive but it looks the nicest too. So you, you get what you pay for. But people say, well, won't wood rot out real fast? Isn't there something I can paint or cover them with? You can paint all the sides except the inside. And speaking of painting, we do not recommend that you use treated lumber. We're not convinced that the, uh, the different chemicals in the wood to keep it from rotting won't leach out into the soil. We don't want to grow our vegetables in that. I think that's actually a good point to make sure that yeah. everybody knows. Definitely when you're going to build your raised beds, don't use pressure treated wood. When we build our decks outside and anything out of wood, we want to use pressure treated wood because it's going to last longer, but not in our vegetable garden. Uh, pressure treated wood contains chemicals and we don't want that seeping into our vegetables. So we've got those different kind of uh, uh, wood at the lumber store. Now the nice thing is all lumber comes in eight foot lengths. So all you do is you pick out the wood you want, you pick out the nice best pieces, and then you tell them, would you cut those in half for me? And they'll cut them for free. And now you have all your wood cut, you just take it home, put it together. But another wood that you can use uh, when you go to the lumber store is man-made wood. This is where they've taken and recycling things like either plastic or wood products, for example, sawdust, and they mix a glue in with, its, with the sawdust and then form lumber from that. It's very good, it'll last, of course, forever, and it won't rot. Insects, termites won't get into it. It is expensive now, but it's gradually coming down in price. So, we're gonna build the boxes first. You, of course, want to look over your garden site, decide how many boxes you want. And remember, we want six to eight hours of sunlight. You want it close to the house, as close as you can to the back door. You can see your garden outside your kitchen window, and then you'll take much better care of it. But you put your boxes down where you think best. Leave at least a three-foot walking space between the boxes and then you take out any grass or weeds that are inside the box, lay down a weed cloth there to keep any future weeds from coming up, and now we're going to fill that with Mills Mix. Remember that's one-third peat moss, one-third vermiculite, and one-third compost. The best way of attaching it is not with nails, because they'll come loose after a while, is with deck screws. And all you have to do is drill a pilot hole with a power drill and then put put those deck screws in. And I like to use three in every corner. 
That'll, that'll keep the wood from twisting and turning and warping. So that's the ground boxes. And now for patio boxes, if you want them up off the ground or you want to move them about, and these could be different size, maybe two by two or three by three or four by four. We use a plywood bottom. And uh, depending on the size, how far it's spanning, if it's a two by two, you could use fairly thin plywood. And you could put legs on it, or even better yet, I like to, for easy cost, is to go to the uh, thrift shop and find an old table. A couple bucks for a table, put it outside, and put your box right on top. Now there's another advantage to that. If you have someone in a wheelchair or who is handicapped in any way, they can sit down and still garden right in front of them. Or you make the legs a little higher or raise the table a little bit, and now you have stand-up garden. That's for people that can't get down, have arthritis, or can't get up and down a lot. So now we have ground boxes, uh, sit-down gardens, and stand-up gardens, all three, all made with the same wood. And now you still have to provide drainage in that. So how many holes do you think we have to put in that plywood? One per square foot. Okay. Easy, easy to remember. And then we put an extra one in each corner. And that will drain all the water out when there's excess water. There won't be much, because remember that Mills mix soaks up the water and holds water. So unless you're overwatering, and that's a secret too of if you see a lot of water dripping out continually every time you water, you put too much water in. But luckily, they won't kill the plants as it would in most containers because it comes right out the bottom. And the Mel's mix not only holds water, but then it drains well also. And with square foot gardening, uh, you can do all kinds of things and, and different things. And the reason is it takes so little space that you can do this sort of thing. And you can have a square foot garden, either part of it out in the ground or you can have it on your patio or your deck. You can even build it. If you go to the all-new Square Foot Gardening book, I show how to build the boxes that go right up the steps into your back. Love that. Or you can have something real fancy out front. Well, thank you so much, Mel, for answering our question. Okay. And stay tuned for more answers to the most frequently asked questions.